Hello, in this video tutorial we want to capture calibration data for simple screen calibration using one single camera position. But before we start we should check a few things. The projectors should be on and running for several minutes since the projection might slightly change until the projectors and their mounting structure is fully warmed up. The image generators should be connected to the projectors showing an image in the correct resolution on all channels. And you have a working network connection between the control PC and the image generators. So now we can start the pattern generator on all image generators. In my case it is one image generator connected to all my four projectors. And I can check if the pattern generator starts correctly on all channels by hitting the D button that shows me a white outline on all the projection channels. The next thing is I should check if the camera connection to the camera is established. I do this by using the camera manufacturer's tools. Now the camera is listed, we open it, camera image is there. We can now create a new project using the projection tools creator. Open the creator program. The application can look differently depending on how you have configured your UI. To be on the same page, let's switch to the default workspace. So go to file and create a new project. This opens a project wizard where we need to enter several things. First thing is we give the project a name and we need to have a folder, more like a workspace where this project should be saved. And you probably have a camera calibration database. In my case it is already imported into Creator so it detects this calibration file. If you don't have it imported yet, you can search on your computer. I have one on my desktop as well. Select the camera database and then you have it here. And you can click next. The next thing we need to do is uh, set up our basic screen geometry. There are different screen types available. Planar, cylindrical, dome or sphere segment. In my case I have a sphere segment and there are two ways of entering the measurements of the screen shape. Either I know the designed data for the screen shape, let's toggle this off for now, so I would really know the opening angle of the sphere segment, horizontal and vertical, or if I don't know these values I can take some basic measurements like the distance of the corners on the bottom and the depths so a creator can automatically calculate the opening angle and curvature of the screen. I will do the measurement way of entering the values. At first I measure the distance between the bottom left and bottom right corner and it is 3.7 meters. We enter the value here in millimeters. Uh, the next thing I will measure is the depth of Screen. The depth is 670 millimeters and I also need to measure the height of the horizon so it can calculate the opening angle to the bottom. It is important to measure vertically. From the horizon to the bottom is this 1.540 meter. Make sure that you enter the negative value here so the curvature goes from the horizon to the bottom, not to the top. And my screen is sitting directly on the floor, so the height above ground is exactly the same. One value missing, that is the height of the top segment. Make sure to measure vertically again, and in my case it's 1 meter 20. So creator now has calculated the opening angle roughly 80 degree, and the vertical angles it's probably 20 degree above the horizon and minus 30 degree below the horizon. The next thing we need to enter is information about the projection channels and how creator produce test patterns on the projection system. So in my case I have four projectors and I need to give creator the IP address of the image generators where the pattern generator is running on. If you don't know this, 
you can hit the I button in the pattern generator. So go to your image generator and hit the I for information key and the pattern generator shows you the IP address and the computer name. In my case 30 148. Um, the next thing is how many projectors are connected to each image generator. In my case all four projectors are connected to one computer. And the re resolution of each channel it is in my case 2560 by 1600. The wizard then automatically fills the table below for all channels. They have a name, IP address, sub-channel number, so if more than one channel is attached to one computer we need some sub-channels here. The port usually can be left at the default and we have the resolutions here. If we would have a mixed system with maybe a projector in between with another uh, resolution, you can override the autofilled values directly in the table. Or if you would have uh, the computers on different IP addresses that are not directly after each other. For example, if I would have a system with two projectors on each uh, computer, the table would be out of field with two IP addresses that are adjacent. But if my second computer is somewhere else, just overwrite here in the table. And you see here for each computer the channel count starts again 01 for the first computer, 01 for the second computer. Okay, in my case everything connected to one computer, so I switch back to the default settings. On the next page we will select the camera that we want to use for calibration. On the left side I see a list of camera calibrations that are available in my camera database and I can also see which cameras are currently connected to my computer. They are shown with the green connection cell. I have one camera with two calibrations. I use this camera added to my project hitting the right arrow and then I can finish the project creation wizard. The project is now opened in my creator and the UI is enabled now. This main window is fully adjustable. You can move the docs around, but I keep everything at the default settings here. Uh, take the camera out again so you can see everything. The UI is structured that we have on the left side all the hardware involved in our projection system and for calibration. So we have the projection channels on top, we have the cameras that we use for calibration, information about the screen and reference markers on the screen. In the middle part we have two views. We have a camera view. We currently can't see much. Uh, select the projectors, produce some color on the screen. So here we have our camera image and in the 3D tab we have a 3D representation of our calibration setup. It will fill up more when we uh, actually do the calibration where then the channels are added and the camera positions that we use for calibration. Let's switch for, to the camera tab. On the right side we have things that are targeted as a process of, of the calibration. So the positions table will fill up with camera positions that we use for calibration and here we have a console giving information about our calibration process. First thing that we need to do to start our calibration is adding a camera position. We can do so by hitting the plus button in the position table. Make sure that in our case here you have selected all the projectors since we want to capture all projectors with one camera position. That's a plus. 
So now we have added a new camera position with our camera and all projectors enabled. We should now ensure that our camera can see the complete screen. For me it's not fully seeing the screen, almost. And now I can see the complete screen. And we should not have any obstacles in front of the screen. The next thing we do is to check our camera settings. We can do so on the left side in the creator. Here we have our camera. You can go to select, take a snapshot. Uh, we will adjust camera settings so that our camera image is not too bright, not too dark. We can let creator decide for the brightness of the camera. It darkens now my camera image so that there is not so much overshooting and there is a good contrast ratio in the image. You could also override these values if you need, but usually the default detected parameters are fine. So hit OK. The next thing that we do now, checking our calibration test patterns. For capturing the screen, we will show test patterns, dot patterns on the screen. We can show these by clicking the project dot pattern on selected channels. This pattern will be captured in multiple variants yeah, to capture the complete screen. But what we can see here now is we have several dots that are not on the actual screen, like here on the top and on the bottom, and we also have dots that are just partly visible. We want to remove these dots since we are only interested in the screen and we don't want to correct for things around the screen. And we don't want to have distortions in our actual calibration data. We can adjust these dot patterns by selecting a projector on the left side and activating the dot pattern tab and hit edit mask. The dot patterns are adjustable in the amount of dots, but this is automatically adjusted to the projector's resolution. Also, these patterns can be adjusted in the dot size and the number of dots, but the default settings are usually fine. What I want to do now is to remove dots that are not on the screen and, that, and dots that are only partly visible. I can do so by clicking on these dots with the left mouse button or even dragging a rectangle over the dots. And you can see on the screen uh, these dots are gone. So start with a fresh dot pattern and now I really remove the dots that are not on the screen. And continue with the other projectors. It is more easy to see if you make all the other projectors black. But you can do so by selecting one projector, hitting project dot pattern again, then dot pattern is just project on this one projector, and all the other projectors are black. So I continue editing. With the right mouse button and dragging a rectangle, you can enable these buttons again, uh, these dots again, or by hitting the Alt key, you can also add points again. Here in this projector, we have several dots that are almost fully on the screen. Uh, I have also the option, instead of completely removing these dots, changing the dot pattern slightly. I can change a padding on all edges of the dot pattern, and then I can move the points slightly in, so I can keep a larger area that I capture. I don't have to remove so many points on the bottom also. There's one point on the bottom left corner that I want to still get, still capture. So I slightly move my dot pattern. Let's check our complete dot pattern again by selecting all projectors and hitting the project dot pattern button again. Now my dot pattern looks nice, just dots on the screen are visible and no cutted dots. The next thing I will check now is 
how my dot pattern recognition works with the current lighting conditions. So I select one projector and project the dots again. And I go to edit recognition. And here I can make a quick check of the recognition parameters by hitting the test parameters button. Now, and it seems I have missed some points I forgot to remove. They are almost not visible in the camera image. Let's close this again. Go to dot pattern again and here's one row of dots that are actually behind the screen. So now, test the recognition settings. Um, in this image we can see the result of binarization of this image and finding the dot centers. The white dots are is a binary or the, the segmented dots and there is an orange cross in all of these dots. There are also the in-between images and captured images selectable here in the layer selector. Here's the black image that was captured as a base background. The white image, so these both images are the raw material and then the binarization of the dots that is influenced by the threshold, by the binarization threshold. There's also an average image and one more interesting thing is the contour image. So in my case everything worked fine, the binarization worked fine, contours are detected on all dots and the creator finally detected the centers. If not all dots are recognized in your setup. There are several potential reasons for it. One thing might be maybe the threshold is not right. Threshold is too high or too low. For example, the threshold is too high. It's the threshold problem is seen best in the binarization image. So we have a black image, white image, you can see everything but still you have no orange crosses in all dots and if you switch to the binary image you see okay just a part of the dots are captured. This is usually meaning the threshold is too high or the other way around the camera is too dark, the projection is too dark. You can adjust by changing the threshold to get the dots back. Other way around if the image is too bright or the threshold too low, you might get something like this. You have much grain in between, so that's something where your image is too bright or the projectors are producing much blooming around the dot pattern, then increase your threshold again. If you have a clean binarization image but still not all dots are marked with the orange cross, you can see best here. Not, um, but you also have a, let's look at the contour image, even your contours look fine, then you might have a problem with the expected dot size. You can see on the bottom right, the dots are expected to have a size in the camera image between the min, minimum size and the maximum size. And if your projection is really small, your camera is far away, has a wide field of view, the dots might be smaller than expected minimum. So let's provoke this. Here we start to see some dots that have a real nice outline but still no cross in size. So they were filtered out since they are too small. In my case, I switch everything back to the default. If you change recognition parameters, then it's usually ca the case that you need to change them for all projection channels in the same way. So then you continue with the other channels and typically set the same settings for the other channels. Okay, we now have prepared our dot pattern and recognition of the dot pattern. We can now start to capture real data. Let's look at the position table here again. It tells us for this camera position we have a camera. We need to capture the camera position and we will capture the dot patterns for our projectors. So we will follow this table for capturing the data. We start with the camera and we want to 
capture the camera position. In order to do so, I want to put a little bit more light in the dome. A simple way to do it is just select all your projectors and project the wide test pattern. Now I can see my screen shape, I can even see the segments of my screen, and the most important things now are the corners, and I will need to see the center of the button at the top edge. We now open the Find Position dialog by selecting the camera in, this, in the position table and either by double clicking on the serial number or going to the position tab and hit Find Position. This opens the Find Position dialog and in order to find the actual camera position I need to tell Creator where some special markers or reference points are placed in the camera image. I have a list of markers here on the left side. These are my markers. I have six markers. These markers were generated according to the screen shape I defined during the project setup. It has added markers in the corners of the screen. My zero markers on the top left, uh, marker number two on the bottom right, three on the top left corner and five on the top right corner and it has put two additional markers in the middle of the bottom edge and of the top edge. We can see the selected markers highlighted here in the 3D view for better orientation. To mark these points of interest in the camera image, select marker. I start with marker 0 and find this point in the camera image. And double click in the camera image to activate to mark this point. If it's activated, you can grab it and drag it around to more precisely position this marker. And I continue with all these markers. In my case, it's easy to see the middle of the bottom edge. Uh, if you don't have segments of the screen like me, you can prepare and put some tape or some physical mark in the middle of the top and bottom edge of the screen. Okay, here on the top edge, uh, my projection is not really filling the screen. I have difficulties to see the actual corner. I need to change my camera settings for the position finding process. Check. Okay, now I can better see the corner. Maybe it's a bit too much since I can't see the seams anymore. Okay. And take a new snapshot, marker number 3. You can always zoom into selected markers with a zoom with a center selected marker button. And one more marker left, top right corner. Okay. Now with all six markers activated, I can hit the find position button and find the camera position. The new camera position is noted here in the camera position and orientation editor. You can also see the detect camera position in the 3D view. So this looks plausible for me. The camera stands in front of the camera. It's upright. It really reflects my physical setup. And in the camera image there are now added uh, small circles. These circles should match the crosses that we have marked in the image. This is a reprojection of the 3D marker positions into the camera image. For these generated markers, it's not often 100% perfect, since the physical screen might be a little bit different than the ideal defined screen. But this is still fine. If you have a completely screwed up camera position, let's provoke something like this. This is usually the result of having markers not assigned correctly. For example, here I have a complete bad wrong camera position. And the reason for that is I mixed up the top left and the top right marker in my camera image. Okay, that's enough about finding the camera position. We continue by pressing the OK button. We are back in our creator main window now and we can continue to capture the data for projection channels. To capture the dot pattern for these channels, they need to be activated here on the left side. 
there are multiple ways to do it. In my case, they are still selected, but you can yeah, override the selection here on the left side. You can also select single projectors here on the right side. But the most convenient way is to select this camera position by clicking the camera and then all channels that are activated for this camera position are automatically selected. So with all channels selected, we take images and analyze them. This starts uh, to project a sequence of dot pattern and it captures all these images with the attached camera. After the calibration process has finished, we now have colored cells in the position table telling us how well the detection worked. A green cell means perfect recognition and if I hold the mouse cursor still I can also see a tooltip how many points of how many projected points were detected. Green means exactly the same amount of dots were detected as were projected. If you are missing some points, the color turns red. If many points are missing or too many points were detected, the cell turns red. In this case, you should go back to your recognition settings, check the threshold or check the camera settings to get better calibration results. The last step to finish our data capture is to calculate the final yeah, projection position on the screen. To better see what happens, let's switch to the 3D view. So we now have our camera position, the screen in front, and here on the right we have all our captured data. And if we hit uh, Generate 3D, the captured data is combined and produces a 3D shape of each projection channel on the screen. We are now finished with the calibration process and we can now finish by saving the project and in the next video tutorial we will show how to produce a projected image on the screen by using the other projection tools. Thanks for watching. Bye.